London. I'm in the city of London to pick up this very car, which is the 996 CSR Evo by RPM Technic. We'll go into the specs of this car a little bit later on, but top level stuff, I can tell you that this is a 996 Gen 2 running 350 horsepower. It's RPM Technic's most hardcore version of their CSR brand. That, by the way, consists of a not unsubstantial power upgrade, a completely revised and upgraded chassis, and a weight saving of around 45 to 50 kilos. This should, in theory, be an absolute pig to drive on roads such as these in the city of London. But, in complete testament to this car, and I've said it already feels special, believe me it does, this car is so easy to drive. While the sun attempts to come up and burst through this misty Sunday morning, we are going to get out of the city before all the traffic and tourists and everything else takes over, hit up some amazing roads, one of which is my favourite in the UK, the B4391. It's really the most appropriate playground for a car like this. Let's do it. My London exit took in the building sites of Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament, as well as Marm's residence at the Palace. Soon though, the city lights were behind me as I pointed the CSR towards roads better suited for this flying aubergine. culmination of what's been a pretty cool road trip the past couple of days. We've gone from Westminster to Wales via Bermondsey and the Breckens, with a little bit of motorway mundanity thrown in there just for good measure. I have to say top line is quite possibly the single best 996 I've ever had the privilege of pedalling. I'm a big advocate of that generation of 911 as you know. Excellent power to weight, great feel and feedback through the car. What RPM have done, they've just taken that recipe, turned everything up to 10. It's a highly emotive car to drive. We'll talk about the engine and immediately deal with the elephant in the room, which is reliability on the M96 engine. Well, part of the CSR pack is the preservation pack preservation pack looks to manage both temperature of water and supply of oil and it does that via a third radiator and a low temp thermostat. At the back of the car there's a deeper sump and there's also an upgraded IMS as well. Couldn't do a 996 video without that IMS acronym. With that dealt with we can talk about the good stuff, power. The CSR Evo has a stage one power kit it's good for 350 horsepower and that's achieved at 7,100 RPM, just 100 RPM shy of the red line. Torque is the same, but the way it's delivered is different. Uptake on this engine is just impressively linear and I mean it gets properly moving from as low as 2,500 RPM. That is mated to the gearbox, which ratios haven't changed, but the shifter itself has had work and it all adds to the drama of the CSR Evo. This particular engine was fully stripped and rebuilt around 7,000 miles ago and includes a lighting and balanced crankshaft and comrods, gas flowed and ported cylinder heads, CSR stage 1 cams, a CSR spec ECU remap, new cam chains and tensioners. The car also, by the way, runs a lightweight clutch, flywheel and adjustable mechanical LSD, all set up to spec by the guys at RPM Technic. The other big, big, big win on this car is the chassis. The spec of the suspension is IBAC hollow anti-roll bars, CSR adjustable lower arms, as well as KW three-way adjustable club sports. We've spoken before about how polished the car rides, but I tell you what, push on, and the car has got amazing focus. The result of that, of course, is sharp turning, nose is extremely planted, which just gives you a little bit more confidence to carry a bit more speed into the corners. I actually think the chassis on this is better than a GT3. Elsewhere, the CSI Evo features floating discs and high performance pads. The Evo's body comprises a carbon fibre bonnet, deck lid and skirts, plus custom front and rear bumpers 
the rear being modified to accommodate a centre exit exhaust. This is a unique feature unavailable to any other road going 996 from the factory by the way. Right, okay, so take a seat inside the CSR Evo. Ominous by its absence, you might say, is the entire lower dash section. That's gone, move back, the shifter. You can see just how tall that is now and its proximity, the steering wheel. The steering wheel is a Momo motorsport item, lovely bit of dish to it. The ashtray is gone and so too have the window switches. They've been relocated to here which makes perfect sense to me, to be honest. The radio has been removed in its entirety. I'd probably put that back in. Behind me, I've got the half roll cage and the harness bar. The rear seats have been removed, so it's just carpet in the back. That's about it. I'll describe it as purposeful in here. As I say, I would put the radio back in, but when you've got that sort of soundtrack out the back, who needs the radio, hey? And on that note, <laughs> that is without a doubt the most glorious sounding, uh, the most glorious sounding exhaust on a 996. The cost for all of this is around 55k plus your donor car, although this one was near 80k plus donor to include that colour change and fully built motor. That puts this into 996 GT3 territory, so would I rather have a CSR? Yes, I would, without a doubt. If you're hell-bent on getting a GT3, then absolutely nothing from the modified world is going to sway you in the other direction. However, if you are in possession of an open mind and you want a car, a 911, that delivers high on performance, has a tremendous engine, a wonderful soundtrack, and an absurdly capable chassis, and that's the crucial bit, that GT3 moniker isn't important to you. This is the car for you. And I have to say, of the 689 miles that I have done in this car so far, not one of them has been spent wishing I was in a GT3. It's just not happened. And as I'm alluring to, with a CSR Evo, you kind of get everything that you'd get in a GT3 package. You can do a cross-continental tour, you can do a full track day calendar, you can use this car exactly as it is intended and not have a care in the world as to what it's doing for the value of the car. If I'm being picky, there are two things I would look to change or refine. First is the colour. The other thing is the shifter itself is quite tall and it kind of undoes a little bit of the work that the short shift does. I would personally have a bracket made just to lift the shifter up so it's still near to the wheel but you could use a stubbier shifter. That way the shift would be a little bit more rifle bolt. Everything else about it is superb. Oh.